guys, this is going to be a new series where I go over a bit of a character's backstory and their appearances in the show or game series. Then, I'm going to analyze their character design and explain why people like them as much as they do. But, before we get into that, if you like my videos and want to support the channel, consider hitting that like and subscribe button. Also, if I miss anything, you want to add something, or there's a character you want me to talk about, leave it in the comments. I do read them all. And without further ado, let's get into it. Katana is a certifiable baddie and one of the first female characters in Mortal Kombat. Her first appearance in the series is as an unplayable character known as Kitsune. During the early development of Mortal Kombat 91, she was designed by John Tobias, the co-creator of the series. He loosely based a design off Princess Mariko from a game called Karateka, created by John Mechner. So, if you grew up in the 90s wishing Katana was your waifu, you have these two guys to thank. In her first depiction as Kitsune, she was outfitted with a single fan, and her role in the game was to be, and I quote, Shang Lao's princess daughter, essentially your prize for winning the tournament, as she would betray her father and fall in love with Liu Kang. And if you cringe when you read that, me too. In an era ruled by damsel and distressed princesses like Zelda or Princess Peach, this isn't too far-fetched for a 90s game. Also, if the name Shang Lao doesn't sound familiar to you, it's because it was the original name for the Master of Deception, Shang Soon. Which means in the context of the Mortal Kombat series, Katana was the daughter of one of the most evil, conniving sorcerers in the entire series. He's an issue even in the newest iteration of the game. I would love to say if he still had a daughter, maybe canon Shang Soon wouldn't be so awful, but I would just be lying to myself. For Mortal Kombat 2, the story was expanded, and Shang Tsung became the minion of Shao Kahn. The daughter idea was scrapped, but the princess idea remained. Now, Katana was a princess of Adinia that was attacked by Shao Kahn, and after killing her family, he adopted Katana. This basically made her the princess stepdaughter to Shao Kahn. As for why her name changed, that's more of a controversial thing. As some of you may know, Kitsune is the word for fox in Japanese, and being such, the name was rejected, as the name of the villains at the time were Shang and Shao, which are more Chinese in origin. Another name was proposed was Katana, but as that's also Japanese in origin, it was also rejected. So what they decided to do was to mix together Katana's original name Kitsune and her new quote-unquote name Katana, making the name Kitana, which still doesn't sound Chinese, considering they're both Japanese names, but they thought sounded, and I quote, generically Asian enough. Moving on from that bit of racism, now I know Mortal Kombat in general is a vague amalgamation of Asian mythologies, but by Talos is that a bad look for your character's origin. Now for when I do these videos typically, I'll be leaving a bit of backstory here, but for Mortal Kombat in particular, at the ending of Mortal Kombat 11, there are about three or four rebooted timelines, so to prevent this video from being an hour long, I'm gonna go over the Cliff Notes version of her personality. Katana is immensely loyal. Unfortunately, that loyalty was given to an evil overlord because she thought that that was her father at first. After being free to make her own decisions, it's clear that she truly cares about people, especially a specific fire-wielding monk. Her plot lines throughout the games are pretty consistent. Either she wants to restore Adenia or in the conflict among the realms. She pretty consistently has love for her mother, and she has a sister-like friendship with Jade that adds dimensions to her character. That and her budding relationship with Liu Kang, which is not as much of a will-they-won't-they they, as much as it is a can-they under these circumstances kind of thing. Also, she's about 10,000 years old, but she looks like she's in her late 20s because Adinians age incredibly slowly. Now, on to her character design. When it comes to silhouettes, the thing that makes Katana stand out from everyone else is her bladed fans, especially in Mortal Kombat 2 where Melina and Jade were basically palette swaps of her. Speaking of Mortal Kombat 2, her classic outfit was a blue mask, a blue leotard, bisected by a black sash, long gloves, knee-high boots, and a headband all in that same matching blue color. And of course, her blue bladed fans. In Mortal Kombat 3, they decided to be more liberal with the blacks in their color scheme. That and definitely doubled down our sexy factor. Keeping her blue mask, adding a lace chest opening in the center, armlets, and giving her earrings. They decided to ditch the headband and instead have her hair tied up into a bun. Since the goal with this design was to clearly fit into the sexy assassin category, ditching the headband was the right move. Definitely makes you focus more on her face, and with her already piercing look, it gives a lot of attitude to the character. In Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, Unchained, Armageddon, and DC Universe, her outfits were, for the most part, the same. Her leotard was now a blue and black color, still somewhat keeping the lace chest opening from MK3. Now though, instead of being a one-piece, it's bisected by a brown belt. Instead of her blue boots from the last two iterations, she now has black knee-length heels and blue thigh-high socks. Her armlets and earrings from MK3 were kept, but her hair grew tremendously. 
now having a long ponytail that's sectioned into three parts. Really the biggest travesty of this design is that they decided to give her a brown belt that literally no one asked for. It doesn't really work with her design at all, it just feels like they threw it in there so that there was another color for them to play with instead of just blue and black. In MK9, or Mortal Kombat 2011, whichever you prefer, they really doubled down on her sex appeal. She now wears a cerulean halter top with silver trimmings that has an opening in the middle that is laced together with strings. I do like the reference to the MK3 design in this look, but it really doubled down on the fact that she isn't wearing very much. She wears a black thong with a cerulean loincloth that has embroideries on the center panel. Her blue mask now has subtle embroideries that match her loincloth and her cerulean arm guards. Her hair isn't quite as long as it is in the previous game, but it was still quite long now. It just flows from her ponytail instead of having the previous design. And in case you forgot she was a princess, she now wears a coronet, which is a small crown that you can see at the top of her head. So this is mildly me being a degenerate, this is my favorite of her designs. She looks absolutely stunning. They perfectly balance her attractiveness with her being incredibly deadly in the game. Because if you're going to stunt character design to make a character sexy, do it successfully, not just throw a bikini on them and call it a day. And her design in this one is so much more than just a sexualization. The unfortunate part for me is that my favorite design is followed up immediately by my least favorite of her designs, which is in Mortal Kombat 10. In MKX, Katana wears a blue top with silver armor that covers her shoulders, arms, and breasts. The top has multiple holes revealing her side and midsections. She wears baggy blue pants with holes on each side, exposing her thighs, dark blue gloves, and brown boots. Her hair is held together by two side braids and two pins in the center. This design is a mess. It is very unclear if they wanted her to be sexy or to be a warrior. For the most part, she is a revenant in this game, so I'm having trouble understanding why she would be sexy or what purpose the armor would serve. If you want her to be a warrior, have more secure placed armor. Even do the like breast armor corset if you want that, but this armor design serves no purpose. And the sexy thing they tried to do for the top and pants do not work. I feel like this design's sole purpose is to annoy me and look ugly. There's no theme and its vision and design is ultimately aimless. Now on to the newest game. Katana wears a blue and black corset top with blue and black pants. She has dark blue gloves and is now sporting small heels. They did keep some of Mortal Kombat X's designs with the armor on her knees and shoulders, but the armor here, while still not really serving a purpose, doesn't disrupt the design and instead adds to it. Her hair is once again in a high bun, but now is held by a single hairpin, and something we haven't seen since her MK2 design, she now has a headband again which I think is a wonderful reference considering all the time nonsense that is happening in this game. One thing you also may notice, Katana is considerably paler than her last couple iterations. I don't exactly know why that is the case, but I do believe it's to make her look more Asian as her past designs were pretty racially ambiguous. Though I don't really know the reason they decided on this change, I think this version of her is going to be how she looks in future games. As you can see, her design in general has gone through different phases, but some attributes remain. That being her blue and black color palette, her blue face mask, and her bladed fans. It really shows the power of iconic traits in her design, because if you look at her newest design, and compare it to her first design, they look completely different. But on a glance, we'll know them as Katana because of those iconic traits. Katana has been and most likely will be in every game of the series, so what makes people love her as much as they do? I believe a large factor of people's like first seems to be nostalgia. In MK2, Katana was one of the only female characters, the other being her literal twin. Like most games at the time, she was the only female character in a male-dominated player base. Not only that, but she played into the sexy ninja assassin fantasy, a fantasy some didn't realize they had until they saw her. One that we see a lot in fighting games, actually. <laughs> Ibuki, Ayane, Taki, Nagase. And as the games progressed, they only doubled down on that fantasy with every new version of the game, up until the design travesty that is MKX. Katana, as I mentioned earlier, is an incredibly compassionate person, and though her story isn't the deepest, she feels like a character with a bit of depth, and people like her because of that. Her relationship to her mother, her relationship to Jade, Liu Kang, and like the dynamic she has with Shao Kahn, they all add depth to her character. And when it comes to Liu Kang, people love character ships and her sails along with canon, which gives fans the ability to pair them in their arts or stories or imaginations. On top of just sheer beauty, Katana has a lot of qualities of a good heroine, and her standing the test of time is just a testament to that. 
And that's the video. Thank you so much if you stuck it out to the end. I know that typically I make anime related content, but Mortal Kombat was my first fighting game. And I thought what a better way to start a new video series than with one of my favorite characters from my first fighting game. Also recently coming from Summer Game Fest, I was super excited about Mortal Kombat 1. Though I do think the name's a bit weird, as the next one will have to be called something else, otherwise it's Mortal Kombat 2 again. Anyway, so this is my first time doing a video like this, so whatever feedback you can give me in the comments, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to talk to each other, or me some more, I'll leave in the comments the link to our Discord. So, whether you grew up with the series, just enjoy the characters, or none of the above, thank you for watching. Make today better than yesterday, and until next time, I'll see you later.